Hello again, everyone. I will not get political, but I will use an issue that has been present in the American election process to make a point. America has a new president now, and whether you like him or hate him, I'd rather we not discuss that, but what we can discuss is how we react to and treat other people. One thing that separates humans from most other living beings is our ability for abstract thought. We can think about and feel things beyond just sensing them. Everyone has an opinion here, and everyone should have a voice in the world, and the internet especially with the YouTube comment system, acts as a bullhorn sometimes, but one where you do not have to look anyone in the face or immediately worry about many of the real-life repercussions. But I am here to say there is nothing bad that could come from us using more tact and more love or understanding when we talk to people. The moment we believe that we don't have to care about other people's emotions and we feel entitled to rudely judge and say whatever negative thing we want to another human being's face, well... That's the moment we lose our humanity. A reminder of peace and love. Thank you. I appreciate all of you. And so now, let's get started here. This is the Scribblenauts Unlimited Object Editor Commentaries, of course. Scribblenauts Unlimited is the name of this game. The Object Editor is one feature of this game for the Wii U and PC versions of it only. And we're starting off with a harpy as the source object. And we're going to be coming back to Pokemon Sun and Moon related creations because that's what you guys have voted for. I create whatever is most popular and most requested each week based on what the most amount of different viewers suggest in the comments section. We started off with a centaur after removing kind of all of those limbs, you know, the wings, the feet, the head, all of that good stuff. Make the body pretty small because we're going to use this centaur thigh or like front kind of upper leg part. We're going to be using that as the bulk of the body for Lunala here because we're going to be creating both Lunala and Sogalio. Amphis Bana wings is what I just typed in. Grab one of those wings and we're going to put it here in the spots where the harpy wings were. And I did just want to mention, of course, for anybody that is possibly worried or whatever, we've been doing a lot of Pokemon stuff lately, so next week we'll change it up even if kind of the most popular thing does end up being another Pokemon creation. We'll take a week off because I do the same thing whenever there's too much Five Nights at Freddy, Steven Universe, Undertale, anything that gets too much in a short amount of time. An Allosaurus, we can take that end tail piece and use that right here, put it on the body part for the harpy, and uh, it's going to go over this pearl that we typed in just a little while ago. On the 20th page of the 29 page library, grab this arm shape that's in the top right corner and use that to be kind of this neck for Lunala, and we're going to type in an eyebrow and put that kind of down at the bottom of the body. So all of these things that I just talked about just now should be attached to the harpy's body and again we made it pretty tiny so that the centaur leg would cover it all up so just make sure you are placing it on the body or the torso part because we want all of those stamp objects to be attached to the torso part and move with that not with the wings or anything you can put in a moon right here and get that kind of crescent moon shape and that's what we're going to have on the ends of those amphis bana wings and now i'll type in a rat tail we'll put that on the body and just paint it all white so that those little rat tail lines all throughout the tail are not showing up. So you want it bleach white, pitch white, whatever. And a seaweed. Uh, you can actually pick between a seaweed food and the plant. So this one, we're going with the plant. I wanted it because it has a lot of kind of crazy pieces going every which way. And basically, I wanted that to show through behind that Allosaurus tail that we have over the pearl there for the body. Grass, that's the next stamp that I've used, and we put that here on the wings in the middle of them all. And I'll go ahead and do something kind of thinking outside the box, I guess. We'll use a siren and go with the monster, of course, instead of the alarm. And we're going to put, actually, that siren monster head behind these Amphis Bana wings. And there's two kind of pieces of hair or whatever from the siren that are coming out. And we want those to be like the claws or hands of Lunala there. So that's looking good if we put that behind the wings. And then use a dagger tooth take that very back tail piece and we'll put that here above the eyebrow but down pretty low on the body a toothpick is what i've typed in next and we're going to take four of those for each wing so that is going to be a lot of stamps being used for that but i do think we need some more design on these wings you know we're probably not going to realistically get to actually yes i can confirm these four toothpicks on both sides meaning eight total are going to make us reach the stamp limit scribble knots unlimited although called scribble knots unlimited does have a 
limited amount of stamp space. A stamp is any piece that we've used to create our object overall. But right here we're in the properties editor where you can edit the health and lots of other scripting details and things, so we'll go ahead and read some background information, which is what I do at this part usually of the commentaries in this series. So background info and fun facts for Lunala. We'll read straight off Pokemon Sunmoon.com. The little blurb says, Since ancient times, Lunala has been honored as an emissary of the moon. It is referred to with reverence as the beast that calls the moon. Lunala is constantly absorbing light and converting it into energy. With its wings spread to absorb the surrounding light and glittering like a crescent moon, it resembles a beautiful night sky. Lunala's signature moongeist beam attack releases an ominous beam of light that disregards the target's ability. Both of these legendaries are very cool Pokemon, and yes, I am going to be getting Pokemon Sun and Moon, and I will be live streaming it. I know that the game has leaked, and some people are playing ROMs of it and all that stuff. I do not support that. I have pre-purchased it and pre-loaded it on my 3DS, so I will be live streaming it the moment that I can fully get it on my game. That might be midnight Thursday into Friday when it releases, but basically I will be doing that. Uh, Twitch.tv slash D-R-K-E-N-D-O. That's Twitch.tv slash Dr. Kendo. Go ahead and follow over there if you have not yet, and if you're interested. So we'll start off with a head as the source object. Get a Mola body, and that's like a sunfish stamp. Again, we'll take the body piece of that and make a white one and this purple one. Below those was a moon stamp, once again. Of course, we're going to kind of cover up the head, but just in case any piece of it was showing, I have painted that head sort of this bluish purple color. And then we'll go into the geometry library here in Scribble Knots Unlimited. If you're in Scribble Knots Unmasked, you're going to need to type in parallelogram to get the shape for uh, the outside of Lunala's eyes right there. Mud Skipper is what we've typed in after that, and we'll grab the front fin kind of there in the middle of the Mud Skipper, paint that all white, and then pimple. So this will comprise all the pieces of the eye within that parallelogram shape. Looking good here as a start. We're long from finished. An ivory, that's what I've used now to, we're gonna actually do it several times. Probably a lot of these white ivory pieces right there, but then we're also gonna paint one, the color of that purplish blue pattern that we have and so we'll put that uh, purplish blue one on our right side it would be to the left of Lunala's head if you were the character but we're gonna have six white ivory pieces put down in total just in this formation like this we want it to be in between that moon right there it's looking at it from a side view almost so that's why it's disproportionate on each side they're not the same exact sizes or pattern symmetrically that same arm shape on the 20th page of the 29 page library painted black we used about five of those to create the mouth or four of those I should say. You want to make sure if you're creating the head and the body separately in this game to go to the properties editor and on the third circle down at the bottom half it says can be worn on the face like glasses you're going to want to check that off and so once you give it to your character you basically give the head object to the body object and it will result in something like this and then you're going to need to edit the body object and of course change the position of these green grids you can turn on the green grids by pressing that button on the left side panel of buttons it it's the top right button with Maxwell's head and a banana, a wheel, all that stuff. And so grab where the head is and kind of move it down if we need to. And that's what we did actually need to do for Lunala. And we may actually need to move it down even further a little bit later. But here's kind of a good draft of what it looks like. And so we'll move on. A bunyip as the source object right here. You know, you could think, oh, I'm going to start off with a lion, but I think the bunyip actually is going to be able to position us in a place where we have, I guess, fewer stamps to use, but also the proportions of the body and everything look a little bit better with the bunyip. Bark is what I typed in for this black marking on the body down there, kind of near the back legs a little bit more. A raptor, we can actually take the velociraptor's thigh piece, you know, above the legs. Uh, we removed the bunyip's front one uh, for that reason. Reason. We wanted the raptor one instead, and we do have to replace, of course, the bunyip's leg, because when you remove that thigh piece from the bunyip, it is going to remove that leg as well. They're attached. The triceratops, we can take the back tail piece from that, and we'll put it on the tail piece in the back for the bunyip right here. And of course, we're creating Solgaleo this time. I'll go ahead and use amber as the black, almost, <laughs> this reminds me of like an avocado or something. I actually tried to type in an avocado one time to see what that would look like. 
to position in this same spot, but when you color the avocado yellow, it'll actually color in the middle of it as well. And so I just didn't like that. It also wasn't the exact shape that I wanted. Tenth page of the 29 page library of shapes. Uh, on that tenth page is a mutant arm, that green arm at the bottom middle, and we can use that for these stripes that are on kind of near the bottom, near the feet. And so speaking of the feet, we can actually take a spider fish and use the bottom fin of that in the middle bottom. And uh, we'll place two on each paw. There are three actually on the paws that are visible for Solgaleo in many of the pictures. But since we're looking at it from the side and we can save stamp space, we're just going to do two in scribble knots here. It's like the third one is out of our vision. It actually looks more realistic this way. Anyway, we're at the scripting and properties already because the body didn't take as much as the head is definitely going to take. So we'll read some background information again from PokemonSunMoon.com. Uh, since ancient times, Solgaleo has been honored as an emissary of the sun. It is referred to with reverence as the beast that devours the sun. Solgaleo's body holds a vast amount of energy, and it shines with light when it's active. It has a flowing mane with a remarkable resemblance to the sun. Its signature move is Sun Steel Strike, an attack that charges at an opponent with the force of a meteor, disregarding the target's ability. Really cool Pokemon. Uh, I'm getting Pokemon Sun as my game of choice or whatever, but this is also my legendary of choice for sure, so I obviously hope to play with Solgaleo and uh, have one of my own. We'll kind of finish off here on the body with another detail since we have some more stamp space. We'll do a flying fish, take that bottom fin in the middle on the bottom side. We'll take that to be these black lines, I guess, kind of where the legs are connecting with those thigh pieces or upper leg parts of the Pokemon. And so now we're in the home stretch here. We can start off with the head as the source object for Solgaleo's head. And uh, well, I'll paint it white just in case, again, anything is showing up kind of behind this. But we'll start off with a hemisphere. You can grab it from the geometry library if you're in Scribblenauts Unlimited. But again, in Scribblenauts Unmasked, those players will need to type it in. So hemisphere is the name of that shape. We've painted it this purpley blue color, really the exact same kind of color as Lunala's body for the most part. We'll go into the 29 page library. Again, I've been saying this a few times. We use this basically every episode. It's just 29 pages of various shapes. On the 28th page, you know, it's got certain body parts. It's got kind of random shapes in Scribble Knots Unlimited. On the 28th page, right next to the trash bin or notepad pencil icon, just to the right of that is a werewolf tail. We're going to use that piece and uh, make that be all white after we kind of move it in the right position. It's going to look like fangs and the fur, actually. So it'll double for us. Mola, we can grab that same body piece from before, but this time it's going to actually serve as the open mouth here. So we're kind of painting it a semi-dark orange color. A Dimetrodon, uh, we can take the back tail piece of that and that'll be for mostly that kind of sun mane that Solgaleo has all across the head. And so we're going to put these pieces uh, exactly as I'm trying to do it. There's going to be a lot of adjusting, so definitely bear with me until this is done because you're going to be like, wait, how in the heck is he doing this? And uh, that's kind of how a lot of my objects go, I guess. You know, it kind of looks very far off when we get started. And then at the end, it looks like a scribble knot semblance of it. A pom-pom we're going to do on this side. There's kind of this more flowy fur uh, fuzziness, I guess, uh, in this part, the left, the right, and on the bottom. And so I'll make sure to do that. We're not going to be able to fit every single detail. I wish we could, but the head, we're definitely going to run out of stamp space. Uh, there is just a lot of detail on this head. And so again, I wish we could, but uh, shark pup bottom fin, that's what we've used for the last kind of main fur piece. It's in the bottom right for us. Uh, dragon fruit, though, is what I'll do for the fluffiness there on the chin, basically, for Solgaleo. And I'll type in amber once more. The amber this time is going to be for the tongue here. So we'll put it into the mouth right there. Need to, of course, layer it behind some things. And so this is slowly coming together. Uh, we'll go with an Allosaurus. Take that back tail piece. We used this earlier, but we're going to take it again and uh, place it kind of all around. Uh, this is going to be like the little yellowish sun right there, the golden sun that's sort of amongst this mane, which itself looks like a sun, of course. And uh, we'll actually vary it up here for just like as if we're looking at it from a different angle since it's a little bit farther away from our vision. This particular point will use a wedge. So a wedge yields a result of shoe and tool. And so you don't want the shoes, you want the tool wedge, and that'll be for the bottom right one. And then we can just finish it off with smaller Allosaurus tails since again, it's like the vision plane is different for where we're looking at these particular golden spiky sun pieces. But all right, uh, we're going to definitely 
definitely need some more adjustments, but we're also going to take this trapezium shape. So again, Scribble Knots Unlimited, you can just grab it in there without typing, but Scribble Knots Unmasked, type in trapezium. A dagger tooth, we'll take that once again. We actually were using kind of a lot of stamps that we used before, and we're getting to reuse them for a purpose here, which is awesome. So the dagger tooth, we're actually moving it behind the mouth, behind all this stuff, but it's going to be over that hemisphere shape. It's going to be for some white of this like nose pattern that is around the Solgaleo nose. Flying fish, I'll type that in. Grab that tail fin, the back tail piece, and that'll be for the actual, the blue part of the nose there for this legendary Pokemon's nose. It's all looking good. So after that, we can go ahead and type in Mud Skipper. We'll grab the middle fin once again, like we did for Lunala's eye piece. This is going to kind of be the same principle. We're going with the Mud Skipper fin and the pimple as the pupil. And that's actually going to be the stamp limit right there. I thought I had maybe one or two more pieces, but uh, I think that's okay. I think we'll be able to get by with that. And so kind of the main things that you'll notice is around those white main pieces, we aren't going to be able to include the gold that is on the tips as well as the orangish red that is within them. So of course on the head object, script it so that it can be worn on the face like glasses. I showed you how to do that before. And uh, here we can actually show the results of now what these two look like. So we'll give the head piece here to the body and it looks a little bit awkward. You know, it looks like the Solgaleo is being stretched wide. And so with that, let's go edit the torso piece. Grab this head grid. I showed you how to turn on and off the grids. So move that green head grid back there a little bit more. We're going to need it to go kind of left to our left, I should say. So basically backwards, maybe even down a bit. And so it's looking a lot better now uh, since the character is still at the moment. It's actually looking a little bit more stiff and stretched out. I think when we undo the still adjective, it should look okay. Uh, one small adjustment to Lunala's head as well. And I think that that's good. So let's unstill these characters and maybe have them battle a little bit. So what better than, uh, I don't know. Let's go ahead and type in a phantom. I know that it was fighting a Gengar in one of the trailer clips. They've released a lot of trailers for Sun and Moon over kind of the last really several months, I would say. And so then I'm going to type in this crazy, lots of adjectives, Salamander. And uh, Solgaleo took that out easy. So our legendaries are quite legendary, actually. Uh, since that was really fast, let's go ahead and put out another foe on the field here. A hostile Amphis Baina, in case anyone was wondering what that actually looks like. Oh yeah, it does poison the characters that it fights. So let me kind of undo that. And yeah, Solgaleo can uh, beat it after that. But it could have been a loss, actually, if we didn't step in. So I hope that you, of course, enjoy these Pokemon. Again, at least for next week, we'll do something a little bit different. But I also wanted everyone to know that there will be a special Patreon creation this month because we did have somebody donate into the Patreon reward tier that has your objects automatically created. So if you are curious, yes, I do have a Patreon and I link it at the end of every video and it's also in the description. But there's a reward tier for you, whoever donates there. In that particular reward, it bypasses the most popular, most requested thing and you can have your character that you want or objects automatically created. And so many thanks to JE Sentry for doing that. That is the subscriber that gave to it. So this month, a little bit later on, there will be an extra episode to celebrate that. Anyway, remember that I'll be streaming this game on twitch.tv slash drkendo. Go ahead and follow over there if you want to see the stream, and I will catch you on the next vid, and thanks for viewing. Been down the road of twists and turns, always anxious to see what's within. We can look ahead to the point of no return to the rest of our lives at the